Ever want to tell someone to get stuffed? Well, in culinary terms, it's not such a bad idea. Stuffed pasta dishes can be found in many cultures and have been made for centuries. China has the wonton, India has its samosa, and Jewish cuisine has the kerplach. In Italy, it was ravioli from the word riavolgere, to wrap. In 14th century Genoa, poor sailors would take their leftover food and stuff it into pasta to be eaten for another meal. Today, you'll find elegant fillings like the ones on our menu. Butternut squash and ricotta ravioli with sage brown butter. So tell them to get stuffed. I'm Garrett Shack, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Today, a poor man's food becomes an elegant gourmet dish. We prepare butternut squash and ricotta ravioli with sage brown butter. Let's get started. All right, we've done all kinds of things on Cooking on the Coast, but I realize we've never made fresh pasta. And it's one of those things that's super simple to do at home, and I really encourage more people to do it. So, we want to get started with our flour. We've got a semolina flour on one side here. You can see that it's kind of a little bit coarser than your normal regular flour, uh, not like the flour wheat that we have over on this side here. We want a combination of both just because it makes the, the, uh, the pasta dough once we get to that stage a little bit easier to manipulate and handle. Just mix it together nicely and then we're going to pour this all out onto our bench here. So make sure you got a nice clean work surface, nice clean hands, pour it out and we want to make a little volcano here. We're, like a meteor came down and right there, crevice in the middle. And we want to crack our eggs right into the middle of that, okay? We're using nice fresh eggs here. Now we're putting all, putting all these right into the middle. Might seem like a lot, but this is the only moisture going into the dish, barring a little bit of olive oil that we're going to add next. Okay. Some salt, because everything tastes better with salt. And now we just want to start mixing. So I've got a fork over here, and we're just going to, working from the inside, slowly start bringing our flour into the egg mixture. And this is where you just get to have some fun. It's like playing with your food, right? But you're gonna see that this is just how easy it is to make fresh pasta at home. Now you see I'm working my way around. My volcano's getting bigger. It's starting to look a little bit like Mount St. Helens now because it's already erupted. Okay, and once we get to the stage where it's not gonna run all over our bench, we can start breaking down some walls and bring it all together. I haven't even got my hands dirty really yet. This is great. Now we've got it to this stage. Get rid of the fork and we'll get our hands into it and knead it like we would any kind of bread dough. Don't want to overwork it, but we want to make sure that it's all kind of brought together nicely and that we get most of this semolina flour up off the bench. And it'll kind of, you know, it kind of works on itself here. It'll pick up what it needs and once it's at that right consistency, it just stops picking up flour and then we'll know we're there. It looks, I mean, to me, now I'm a chef, of course, so I've seen lots of fresh pasta, but if you've never seen fresh pasta before, we're almost spot on. This looks exactly how it's supposed to look. All right, awesome. Now, we'll just transfer this back to our bowl, or actually, we'll just leave it on the bench here. We'd want to wrap it up, but we'll just leave it on the bench to rest for a few moments while we make our filling. So today's filling, butternut squash, and of course, ricotta cheese, which actually isn't cheese technically. It's uh, made not from the curds, but from the whey, so it's a dairy product but still equally delicious. Okay, got our butternut squash right here. Here's our ricotta. And I'm gonna use the butternut, just use a spoon to scoop out our butternut squash and we'll just add it right in there. Now I roasted this off in the oven. Took, uh, I don't know, it took about an hour, I guess. Uh, depends on the size of your squash. Interestingly enough, we call it squash here, but in Australia, this would be known as a pumpkin. Kind of cool. Those Aussies, uh, those Aussies have their own way for everything. It's awesome. Um, yeah, but we want to scrape it all out of there. Took about an hour. Roasted nicely, just simply with a little salt and pepper and some olive oil. Just smells so sweet, and the color is what I love best about butternut squash. It's just so such a vibrant orange color. Okay, that's good enough. And then we just sort of want to mash this all together. We're using very little seasoning in here. We're gonna add some salt, pepper. And that's really about it. We want, the, uh, we want the filling to be flavorful and really tasty, but we want the butternut squash to be the, the real focus here. 
lots of lots of health benefits to recover to uh, butternut squash as well. Good for good for lung health, and studies have shown it even decreases incidence of lung cancer. Get out there and eat your butternut squash. Okay, then we go with some salt, some fresh cracked pepper, and that's ready to that's ready to get stuffed into our pasta. Our dough's resting, and we'll be back later in the show to pull together our butternut squash and ricotta ravioli with sage brown butter. Don't go away. Right after the break, we're getting out on the road. You won't want to miss that. on the go time and we've stumbled across Vancouver Island's first and only fresh tortilla factory. Adriana's smells a bit like Mexico around here. Let's go see what's cooking. So here we are behind the scenes at one of Victoria's first tortilla making Shops? I the guess what factory. would we call this? A factory, a factory yeah, right. yes. It doesn't have a factory feel because it feels like it's a, you know, it feels still like it's homemade, right? Yes, um, thank now, you so much. It yes. smells amazing in here, I have to say, Adriana. Thank, thank like you. The, you can really smell that you're using quality ingredients. Uh, the, the masa, I guess, so masa flour, no gluten flour in here, right? No gluten flour whatsoever. That's what we can say or certify that all our products coming from the factory, they are 100% gluten free. 100% gluten free. Yes. So um, this machine, here I know is really unique. Uh, tell me a little bit about the story of how it came here and, and, and what's so special about it. Okay, uh, we purchased this machine in Mexico seven years ago and unfortunately uh, it came very damaged when right. it came to Victoria. However, um, my husband insisted in having it. He pretty much changed the whole machine uh, inside, so the only thing that is Mexican is the outside. It's the outside. It's really unique. So the raw dough goes in the top, it has a round cutter, am I right? And then yes. rolls down through here. Now it sits on, on steel plates. Yes. And they rub together. Because it, it's not a quiet machine, is no, it? No, it definitely is not. No, it's and, a little bit noisy. And then it cooks as it goes through. I think um, I think Wayne was mentioning that there was something like 25 different pilots in there or something like that. Yes. Uh huh. And then comes out but the other side. But it's completely cooked. Fantastic. So why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, some of the products that you make here? Okay, so the products basically are made with the corn tortillas. And so we have the one that we uh, package in a dozen so for the supermarkets. Yeah. Then we have our the chips that we sell to different supermarkets as well. The tortillas for tacos, the tortillas for enchiladas, azteca pies, quesadillas. Well, uh, Adriana, you've been teasing me with all this fabulous product yeah? here in front of me. I'm okay. getting, I'm getting really, my stomach's starting to gurgle. <laughs> okay. Uh, is, what, is there somewhere we can go to try this? Yes, but let's go to the deli. Ah, uh, sounds okay. good. Let's go. Let's go. Adriana, this deli space is really incredible. Oh, uh, it feels really roomy in here, and I guess that's because now you've moved that big tortilla machine over to the factory, right? That's correct. But over here, you make a lot of stuff yourself as well, right? Yes, yeah. we do. We have a variety of salsas. We do burritos, enchiladas, tacos. We have an extensive menu. On that note, we, you know, the dish you wanted to prepare for us is kind of it's street food, right? So it's a taco de calle, which is a street tacos. And the only thing we do is we have our chicken breast, yeah. and I just put my magic powder, it's mm -hmm. our signature spice, and uh, that's what it's recognized with um, the, the people that come here. And then they go to the oven for 40 minutes, and when I come back, uh, we can do our tacos. That sounds How great, yeah, that? let's okay. let's go. All right, those are in the oven okay. now. What's okay. the next step? The next step, we are going to start doing our tacos. And these so, are nice fresh tacos that we just, uh, just yes, pressed? Yes, just pressed, and so we can just, it's very simple to do the tacos at home for everybody that wants to do tacos. I always like to put a little bit of cheese. Yeah. And the reason is that I think with the cheese, when it starts melting, then you know your tortilla is ready to oh, melt. And I okay. always like to put our aioli chipotle salsa so oh, you can yeah. try a little bit. Yes, please. And that one you make here as well, huh? Yes, we make it here as All well. Right. So then we take our chicken that is already prepared. Oh, very nice. And so what we do is we just slice it. 
Ah, uh, still looks nice and moist. I the like bread, it. Some people at mm. home they are worried because the chicken breast sometimes you um, is a very tough after mm -hmm. you cook it. But the, the secret is to cover it yeah. after you cook it, and it's nice and moist. Yeah. So it, uh, if you see the tortillas already cooked. So it's ready to come out. Oh, you can yes. see the cheese is bubbling around there. Or hopefully they can see that at home. It's bubbling and they're crispy a little bit on the sides. Very crispy and they are ready to be dressed. It smells so, delicious. I love you. that fresh smell of the corn tortilla. Oh, thank you. So we put a little bit of our lettuce. Yeah. And then you can get crazy with any of the salsas of your choice. Is this salsa verde? Salsa verde. Yeah. We have uh, salsa Doña Chela. This is a poblano pesto. Oh, nice. And salsa rustica. The salsa by itself is very delicious. Would you like to try with some uh, of our chips? Oh, right yeah. There? Yeah, yeah. Check out these really cool chips over here. Yeah. These so, are for Canada Day. Yeah. Hey, how fun is that? What did we call this one? This is salsa rustica. Rustica, okay. Yeah. And it's a little spicy, but chunky. Mm, it's beautiful. It's fresh and light. Um, a little bit of heat, but not too much. Then and then this one here was really interesting to me. Yeah, chile de arbol. So we do uh, the mix of four different chiles. Okay, yeah. And it looks spicy. Uh, roasted garlic, <laughs> and it's spicy, and, yeah. but it's very delicious. Could I put some of these on oh, one of these guys and give it a try? You can, and then try my, it out. My viewers like to see me suffer a little bit, so. Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. You so always we'll... suffer in your programs. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> At the end of the day, yeah. My job is so hard. Yes, that's right. So now I would just pick this guy up. Yeah, and say you yes. Squish it like that. Squish it like that and right. go ahead. All right, it might yeah. get a little messy here, but uh, that's all right. Here we go. go ahead, go Thank, ahead. That's what the tacos are for. Give it a yes. try. Yeah. That tastes so good. You really get the fresh corn tortilla. I mean, I think that's so important in a good taco, right? Yes. Uh -huh. The chicken's nice and moist. The freshness of the salsa fresca that you put on, and then I get. I get some good heat from, uh, what did we call this again? Salsa chile de arbol. Salsa chile, chile de, de arbol. arbol. Adriana, thank you so much oh, for having me here today. You're very welcome. Thank I you appreciate for it. coming. Thank you for coming. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to share these with the TV crew too, and the camera oh, guys. Oh, yes, definitely. They get mad at me when I eat too much of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank okay. you so much, Adriana. You're very welcome. Thank you for coming. our kitchen where we're working on butternut squash and ricotta ravioli with sage brown butter. Our dough has had a chance to rest and now we just want to cut off a few little pieces and get it through our handy dandy rolling machine here. So you want to start with a fairly small piece because what you're going to see happen here is it's going to come out really thin and it should be a nice long piece here. We want to set it on the widest setting possible first. Just kind of pinch it so you get a, a low end there and then just start rolling it through. All right, now that doesn't look like much of a pasta, but that's okay, that's what we want to do that just to get it flattened so we can get it back into the, uh, into the, into the uh, roller here a little bit easier. Okay, let's try it again. Still on that same number seven setting, and now it's starting to take shape like a pasta. All right, you can almost see it's starting to look like uh, a lasagna noodle or something like that. Now we can drop the setting down. So we were at, we were at seven, we're gonna go to five. Just put a little bit of flour on it just so it doesn't stick to our roller. And away we go again. This is where you need a sous chef because he could just be rolling this, he or she could just be rolling this while you're working on other stuff or having a sip of a delicious wine. Drop it down another notch. I'll take it down to three in the interest of time. Just wanna pinch it so it gets caught in there. I'm gonna lift it up a little bit on this side. You don't want it to tear off. You can see we're getting ultra thin now. Look at this. All right, we can almost we can almost see our hand through it. Now for ravioli, this is probably about as thin as we want to go. We're on the number three setting on this machine. We'll do one more because we need a second sheet. Flatten it down a little bit. For those of you that have been paying attention, we've got uh, you see on the stove here, got some water already on the boil and I've got some butter melting in the pan. There we are. Down to number three again. That's about as thin as we want this ravioli to go. It's got to hold some stuffing, so we want it to be, uh, we want it to be, have a little bit of sort of texture to it still. There we go. Okay, 
Now, you're probably saying, oh, but it's not perfectly straight and all that kind of stuff. That's quite all right. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. We'll put a little ravioli in a few spots here. There we go. This is the, this is the ricotta and, and butternut squash filling. And put a few little ways down the pasta. Uh, let's find another spot here. There we go. Now we wanna brush with a little bit of water all around the filling. This is gonna act as our glue and stick these uh, pasta sheets together. Lovely. And now we just take the other sheet that we had and just lay it right over top, as such. And now this is the part where you have to be a little bit careful. You wanna use your whole hand, or both hands even, and just press it down, starting from the center, to try and get all the air out. And we'll do that for each one. And you can be pretty firm at this point, like really press down on those, uh, on those uh, corners around the, around the filling. Okay. Lovely. And then just grab a cup from your, from your cupboard and give it a press. And there we have our raviolis. Okay. Now you might be thinking that's a lot of waste. Like I said before, you can re-add it, introduce it to your pasta dough and roll it out until you get next to no pasta waste at all. There you go. All right, and then you just keep going. You can freeze those, which would be great. Put a whack of them in the freezer, give them to your friends for Christmas. People will love you. Okay, over here to our water pot, which we need to salt. I haven't salted it yet. Put a big pinch of salt in there. And then we're just gonna drop our pasta right in there. Lovely fresh raviolis. Make sure it's at a, make sure it's at a simmer, not a, not a really strong boil. And then add your pastas. And while those are cooking, we're going to make ourselves a sage brown butter sauce. There we are. You can see I've got some butter already melted here. I'm gonna turn up the heat. And what we're trying to do is, is really brown or almost burn those, um, those milk solids that are in there. We have some sage here. I'm just gonna pick a few nice big leaves and add them in right now. Almost like, almost like deep frying them in the butter here. There we are. Look at that beautiful sage flour. Very nice. This is a really traditional uh, flavor combination of squash and sage. They go hand in hand together. Really delicious. And sage is one of those herbs that's been around for 2,000 years. People have been using it in a number of different ways for lots of health benefits, all kinds of stuff. Let's crank up the heat on this guy and start, start browning those, those milk fats in there. And what happens is it creates this nutty, really rich, nutty kind of smell and flavor. It's amazing. See our pasta has popped up to the top of the pot. I might just give them a little turnover. Et voila. Okay, and we're almost there. Make sure you're ready for this stage with the butter. Um, you can see we have some lemons cut here already. As soon as that starts turning brown, it can quickly go to burnt. <laughs> and then your dish isn't so good. So we definitely want to keep a close eye on it here and wait for it to start turning golden brown. Give that smell. I think I've said this before, but brown butter could be a cologne as far as I'm concerned. Okay, bubbling away nicely. Okay, you can see it's really frothed up now. Lindsay, you getting that? You can see how the brown's starting to come up. All right, I can smell it. Mmm, smells amazing but we want to stop it. See, there's that brown in the foam. We want to stop it here at this stage, and that's where our lemon juice is going to come in. And, of course, turning off the heat helps. There we go. Now we're ready to go to the plate. So, get our ravioli out. Strain a little bit. We're going to give it a little dab on the old uh, cloth over here. <laughs> My kids will love that. <laughs> All right, this just takes off a little bit of the extra moisture. We don't want all that water on our plate because uh, it'll interfere with the flavor of our awesome sauce right here. Okay, now let's get over to our plate here. Look at these beautiful, beautiful little packages. There we are. And last but not least, we're just gonna Pour some of this amazing sage brown butter right over the top. Make sure you get lots of sage leaves. A 
Look at that. And there you have it. Butternut squash and ricotta ravioli with sage brown butter. Looks delicious. And what better way to enjoy a delicious stuffed ravioli than with the perfect wine pairing? With me today is Desiree from Church and State Winery. Hey, Desiree. Hi, Chef. Nice to be here. Thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, what wine have you brought for us today? So today, what I have is a 2015 Trevella. So it's a kind. It's a Rhone style uh, blend. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's aged in oak and uh, acacia barrels. So okay, it gives kind of like a rich, nutty, kind of almost almond flavor to it. It's quite That's subtle. That's from the acacia barrel. It is, yeah. Oh, interesting. I've never heard of that so before. That please, sounds really yeah, cool. let's have a taste. Yeah, let's give it a whirl here, hey? Yeah. Oh, it smells great. It's got a really nice nose. Mm. Mm. Yeah, one of my personal favorites. Mm. Yeah. And why did you choose that with the ravioli? I think it'll pair really, really nice with the pasta. And I know you did a fresh kind of ricotta filling, so I think it'll, it's a nice crisp wine to have. And Sure, well, let's, really let's give it a whirl, because I, I see yeah. what you're saying about the nuttiness from the acacia. Yeah, barrel. you get that little bit, uh, it's more characteristic, so I like that. For you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and I think yeah, with the brown butter, it probably should go really well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Do you make fresh pasta in the restaurant? I guess I should mm -hmm. ask you a question when you mm -hmm. get your mouthful, mm -hmm. hey? Mm -hmm. That's a classic move. <laughs> 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 Are we both got full mouths? Mm hmm This is perfect for that's television, a, by the way. That's a good place to be. <laughs> I don't mind it. A little more wine will be perfect. You got that right. Cheers <laughs> to that. Mm. Mm. You're absolutely right. I think mm. it really does bring out the uh, the nutty notes mm -hmm. in the brown butter. The brown butter is fantastic with it. Mm -hmm. You really do get that little, that nice pairing. And so. that hint of sage too. Mm, that's nice. Yeah, I like that's that. It's really fabulous. Yeah. yeah, goes really, really nicely. Yeah. Um, so, you're, you're chef at a winery. You work. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. Church State Winery uh, in uh, the Sash on the Sash Peninsula in Brentwood Bay. Nice. So yeah, I'm the chef there. We have a nice little bistro. So we're open for uh, lunch services. Um, we do nice thin crust pizzas at the bar. A whole oh, arrangement delicious. of nice charcuterie, meat, cheeses. Great food, great yeah, wine. Yeah, absolutely. We do a lot of a lot of weddings and events there. It's a great spot. Like great that. wine, great food. Well, I've been to the room. It's gorgeous, yeah, it's and I know the food yeah. stands up to it. Yeah. So that's awesome. Thanks awesome. so much for being on the show, Desiree. Thank you. We'll finish this up in a second. Yeah? That sounds good. <laughs> Check out our website. We'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to savor the flavor. This is delicious. Really nice.